Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel, Must Love Labs. My name is Alan. On this channel, we talk about tips and tools for how to raise, breed, and sell Labrador Retrievers as quality family pets. So, if you're new here, you might consider subscribing. In today's video, we're going to do some question and answers about dog breeding. I've printed out a list of uh, questions that people have been asking on the channel and we got enough of them here to where it's time to do a video and have some conversation revolving around the questions that you folks have been asking. So we're going to do some breeding Q&A. Let's get into the content. Okay, like I said, I've printed out the list of some of the questions that people have been asking on the channel. So let's get to that. And I'm, I'm going to be reading here. Uh, Angelo Jefter writes, uh, I wanted to ask, should I buy a male or female first to start dog breeding? Most people say I should buy a female and produce my own male and use the male as a stud. Um, you definitely want to start out with a female. That's what I would recommend. Uh, do it however you want, but it really is all about the females. That, that's, that, that's the main thing. So you want to get a good quality female um, and, and get her up to the appropriate age, depending on what breed she is, and then think about a stud. Uh, you can bring in your stud a year later. You can outsource your stud and never bring a stud in. Lots of stud options, but it really does focus on the females. So I recommend you start with a good quality female for breeding. Now, Angelo had also asked um, if he should hold back a male dog and use that for a stud. Um, no, I would not recommend that you hold back one of your female's puppies to use for a stud. Um, unless you're just not going to breed him with her, because that would be line breeding. And we can talk about that on another question here. Uh, but if you're line breeding and you're talking about breeding a parent dog to one of its offspring, uh, male or female, doesn't matter, um, you're going to have, that's called line breeding because they're in the same bloodline. Uh, and you, uh, you, you maximize the risk of unwanted genetic traits surfacing when you do that. Uh, some breeders do it. Uh, they've been breeding for years and they'll, they'll see something that they really want to hang on to, some trait, the way a muzzle looks or a certain tail or paws or something, and they'll run the risks of line breeding in an attempt to hang on to a trait that they really like, especially if they want a big show with it or something but you also take on the added risk of unwanted genetic traits surfacing when you do that. So I don't recommend it. Hey guys, if you're getting value from this video, do me a favor and hit that like button. It sure does help out quite a bit. I sure do appreciate that. And if you want to support our channel, I've got a Teespring store. I'll put a link in the description. You can go there and check out a t-shirt or a hoodie. Um, I always put links to products that we use and approve of here at Must Love Labs in the descriptions to my videos. Uh, so you might look there as well. I'm an Amazon affiliate. They kick me back a few pennies if you guys buy something. That's how that works. And thanks in advance for doing that. Okay, Alicia Pyle writes, uh, Do you need to buy a male from a different breeder than the female so that they're not related? Uh, or is it like some livestock where the mother can be bred to her offspring? Okay, we were just touching on this. Um, and, and very related questions, um, pretty much the same answer really. Um, I would recommend that you get them from a different breeder. Uh, and this is a, a good reason to buy dogs that have been registered because they have pedigrees. And you can compare the pedigrees and make sure that they're not related. Um, genetic diversity is your best tool against unwanted recessive traits surfacing. So completely unrelated sire and dam breeding puppies and you want to stay away from inbreeding. You don't want to breed the siblings. And you want to stay away from line breeding, which means breeding dogs down the same bloodline, parents to their grandkids, that kind of thing, with the dogs. Uh, these all uh, increase the risk of, of unwanted genetic issues coming forward. A cleft palate, a uh, floppy ear, a tail that's too long, this kind of thing. That's when you start to see more and more of that kind of stuff. All right, moving right along, Wilfredo Rodriguez writes in, uh, and he asks, uh, do we need a license or something to become a dog breeder? Uh, that depends entirely on where you live. 
Some places you have to have a license. Some places it doesn't matter, it's illegal and you can't do it at all. Uh, in other places you don't have to have a license unless you have so many dogs on site or so many breeding females intact on site. The point here is that the rules change from place to place. Um, I live in Missouri, so you go to the Missouri Department of Agriculture's website and you learn about the rules. Um, and I recommend you do that wherever you're at. Uh, the Department of Agriculture almost always has a website up and you can go there and find out what the rules are for breeding in your area. And that includes whether or not you need a license and if so, what kind of license. Okay, subscriber Leah Strope, and, and folks, if I'm not pronouncing these names correctly, please forgive me. I'm doing the best I can. A lot of great diversity here, and I don't know how to pronounce everything, so just bear with me. Uh, but Leah asked a couple of questions. Um, she asked, how much does DNA testing usually cost? And should I make my business an LLC or get insurance? Okay, so three questions there. I'll take the first one. How much does DNA testing usually cost? That depends entirely on which service you go with uh, and what panel of tests you will elect to participate in. Uh, and you'll find that out when you go to their website to, to order the test. Um, so anyways, 200, 300, even $350 is normal for a good panel of DNA tests. Um, and you can Google that and pick one out. Um, I'm using paw print genetics. Um, some people think they're a little pricey, but I like their testing structure. Um, uh, Embark does it, and, and there's others. You can just Google it and pick one that works for you. Uh, the other question was, should I make my business an LLC and get insurance? Um, again, this depends entirely on where you live and what the laws are like where you live. Uh, I could tell you what works for me here in Missouri, and if you don't live in Missouri, that information might not do you any good. So what you really need to do is talk to a CPA and an attorney where you live and ask them those questions and follow their advice. Okay, let's see here. Austin Nolans writes in. He, asks, he says, I'm just starting and looking into purchasing dogs, and I'm just wondering if it matters if a dog is not listed as having a champion in the bloodlines or the sire. Um, if the breeder has great reviews and the puppies have full AKC registration, does lack of champion bloodlines or sire matter? Um, whether or not that matters depends entirely on who you're talking to. Some people care a great deal about that and they want to have champion bloodlines and they're willing to pay uh, 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 a lot of money for that. Uh, other people could care less. They're not interested in, in spending the extra money that it takes to buy a dog with champions in the bloodlines. So really you're looking at uh, at least two different mar markets here. Uh, one market that wants the champion bloodlines and they're willing to pay for that. Uh, another market that isn't too interested in the champion bloodlines and they're not willing to pay for that. Um, the champion bloodlines, typically it's very normal to see those dogs going for two and three times as much money as the non-champion bloodlines. And this is all in the context in the context of registered puppies, okay? Non-registered puppies that don't have pedigrees, are, there's not going to be any champions in those bloodlines unless it's uh, from a real isolated event that's not mainstream. That could always happen. Um, so you're looking at two different markets here. People that want champion bloodlines, people that don't want champion bloodlines. Uh, people that want champion bloodlines are going to be a little more demanding. They're spending more money with you and they're gonna to wanna to get more value for their dollar. Uh, so you wanna be prepared to cater to that. Um, and the people that aren't, inter aren't interested in champion bloodlines, um, um, they're spending less money with you. They may or may not want uh, um, quite as many pictures, quite as much information, genetic testing, vet results, the list goes on. So here's what I would tell you to do. Does it matter? That depends on who you're talking to. That's the answer to your question. And further, what I would suggest you do is decide which market you want to sell dogs in and then buy your breeding stock accordingly. Uh, you might start out with dogs that are not champion sired, um, champion damned, uh, and then later when you get your, your, your feet wet a little bit and get some experience, uh, you're ready to up your game on your investments because you're gonna have to buy dogs that have champion bloodlines if that's what you want to do. Uh, then down the road, you can move into that. That's what I'd recommend. Hope that helps. 
Okay, Dave Keen writes in. He says, uh, I love dogs, and my question is, can this be profitable? Um, I guess a lot of people have told him that it can't be profitable or that he shouldn't be thinking about profit, blah, blah, blah. Um, we're not going to debate any of that. I'm just going to answer the question. Can it be profitable? Yes, it can absolutely be profitable. You can also lose your shirt, uh, just like any business venture. Um, control your spending and be careful about what you spend your money on, you know, as far as whether or not you're going to be able to bring a, a quality product to the market and offer it at a fair price and keep your expenses down. Uh, just like with any business, yes, it can most definitely be profitable. Don't let anybody tell you that it can't be profitable um, or, or that it shouldn't be profitable. Um, bringing a good product to the market, um, there's nothing wrong with being paid for a job well done. And that includes breeding dogs. Okay, CB writes in and says, um, uh, does mama always give birth inside? Uh, she does at my place. Now, some people have dogs that just stay out in kennels all the time or, or whatever. There's lots of different setups. Uh, but here at Must Love Labs, um, Mama gives birth right here in the house. And the puppies stay right here in the house until they're old enough to not have to be in the house. There's a lot of good reasons for this. If anything goes wrong during the birthing process, for one thing, uh, you, you know, you want to be right there so you can deal with it. Um, little puppies, uh, they can't even regulate their own body temperature, but you can certainly regulate the thermostat in your living room. Uh, and, and that's just one good reason. So yes, there's a, a, a probably a longer answer than you were looking for. But yeah, mama always gives birth inside here at Must Love Labs. I recommend you do the same. Let's see here. Pipe Organ wrote in, uh, from the time of mating one of your dams to knowing that she is pregnant, what is a normal time? Um, I've noticed that with my Labradors, about three weeks into the pregnancy, uh, their nipples are starting to swell a little bit and turn pink. Uh, at this time, you can see some behavioral changes in your dog. Their energy level can drop off. Uh, there can even be morning sickness. Uh, all these are signs that she's pregnant. Uh, and we see those right around three weeks. Uh, if you're curious and you want to have it confirmed, you can go to the vet. There's a real simple blood test and they can tell you whether or not she's pregnant. Uh, so with Labradors, that's about three weeks. Okay, Humberto Allegria asks, um, is two females too much or should I go with one but higher quality? I tend to go with quality over quantity in most things and breeding stock is no different. Uh, I would start out with one female and get the best female that you can afford. Do lots of homework. Uh, research your breeder, find exactly what you're looking for, uh, and you know, stay within your budget. But I would get uh, one high quality dog over two lesser quality dogs. That would be my choice. Okay, Natalie Gibson writes in and she asks, uh, she said she's wondered about uh, registering and genetic testing. Uh, she hears breeders say that they do this to ensure the health of the puppies. Uh, is it required? And who do you register them with? The mom, the puppies. Uh, could I please explain this? And as she says that it seems to her that uh, the costs might even outweigh uh, what you would actually make in the end. Okay, a couple different questions here. We'll take them one at a time. Um, uh, ensuring the health of the puppies with genetic testing. Yes, that's exactly what that's about. Uh, when you do these genetic tests, um, you can do it on a puppy that's two weeks old. Uh, or you can do it on an adult dog uh, at any time in their life or, or anywhere in between. Uh, but what's going to happen is, like um, with paw print genetics, for instance, I've mentioned them before, um, they'll get a swab and you'll send it in and they'll test a, a panel for things like with my Labradors. Uh, you tell them what breed you have and they will test for known genetic issues with the breed that you're working with. Uh, some dogs have issues with uh, retinal dysplasia, or they're prone for cancer, or they're prone for hip problems, or nasal conditions, uh, problems with the spine. Uh, too many things to count, so many different breeds to talk about. Uh, but the genetic testing helps you weed this out. Now, is that a guarantee that the puppies won't have that? No. These things are, are known to the breed. But what you can do is guarantee that the parent dogs don't have that, the dam and the sire, through genetic testing. 
Uh, and it's reasonable to believe that their puppies will be much less prone to have those issues if the parents don't have those issues. Because we're talking about passing unwanted traits on through genetics. And that's what the tests are all about. Um, uh, if you test your parent dogs, um, you've got a much better chance, of, assuming that the tests went well, uh, that you won't pass that on with the puppies. Uh, as far as the cost of the testing um, outweighing what you'd make in the end, uh, you only have to test your parent dogs once, okay? You'll test your dam and your sire once. And if the test looks good, the test results look good, you have any questions at all about it, you take it to your vet and read it together, um, you're done testing that dog. You don't have to test them again. And now those two can have as many puppies as you want as you as you want them to have and they're and they're you know healthy to produce uh, you don't test the puppies so much as you test the parent dogs and then your customers if they want to test their puppies that's their business okay and Natalie had also asked about registrations who you register these dogs with um, there's lots of registries out there the most popular one that comes to mind is the AKC the American Kennel Club there's also the ACA the American Canine Association uh, and, and these registries are, are where you can track the lineage of these dogs. Uh, so they'll get a pedigree. It shows who their parents are, who their parents were, as far down the line as you want uh, uh, to, to look is what they're willing to provide. Three-generation pedigrees are normal. You can pay a little extra and get a five-generation pedigree sometimes. Uh, but that's who you register the dogs with. So uh, if you want to be able to register your puppies, then your male and your female dogs, the dam and the sire, uh, both need to be registered, say, for instance, with the AKC. If they're both AKC registered dogs, then uh, you'll be able to register the puppies. You'll send in a litter packet as the breeder uh, and let them know how many puppies you have. And they'll send you out a puppy kit that's got the registration forms for each one of these dogs. Uh, and they'll, they'll, be, they'll track the lineage and, uh, and show you the pedigree when all that plays out, who the dog goes to and so forth. Uh, there's also breed specific registries um, and you can look into that as well and they operate very similarly all right jose quinones writes in and he asks is it okay to buy a puppy and have it shipped uh, yes it is i ship dogs to people on a regular basis uh, the important thing here is to vet your breeder you, you need to have a good idea of who you're dealing with there are scammers out there, sad but true. Um, so you want to see an active Facebook page with lots of pictures of parent dogs and, and puppies and previous litters. Uh, website, same thing. The, some breeders have their own websites and you can, you can see the same type of things. You're looking for a history here. Uh, you know, several years worth of dogs, uh, lots of pictures, uh, testimonial letters, um, at any point in the process when you're dealing with these people, um, if you start to get a sense that, that something isn't right, it probably isn't, okay? It's okay to trust your instincts. Just walk away. It, it, seriously, just, just walk away. Um, um, let's see. Yep, if it doesn't feel right. And the tip that I was going to give you on this is um, you can ask a breeder who their veterinarian is. Just get a name and a city. You can look them up yourself, that's part of your homework, and give that veterinarian a call. Say, hey, I'm thinking about buying a dog from so-and-so. They said you're their vet. Is that true? Uh, that'll tell you real quick whether or not you're dealing with a breeder. Okay, here's the last question today. Uh, Mastiff Ranch writes in and asks, uh, can I provide information on how I created the intro to my videos? Um, yes, I can. Uh, Fiverr.com. Um, there's, there's a lot of independent freelance artists on Fiverr.com that specialize in doing uh, YouTube videos, intros, outros. Uh, we see them all the time. A lot of times we don't even think about them, but yeah, somebody's got to develop that. And uh, that's who I use is Fiverr.com. And um, um, I had a logo made there. And then I used a different uh, a contractor on Fiverr to animate that logo and add music to it that you see in all my videos. So that's where I got that done. The logo was pretty cheap, um, 20 bucks or so. Uh, the animation was a little more. You, 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 there's a wide range that you can spend on that. The sky's the limit on that one. Um, hope that helps. 
Well, that wraps up our breeding Q&A session. I hope you guys got value out of that video. If you did, hit that like button. And you definitely want to subscribe to my channel. I will be doing more videos on this topic and others. And thanks for watching Must Love Labs. We'll see you in the next video.